Thomas the Tank Engine was inspired by our Manx Railways. But is Thomas about to lose his friends? The Fat Controller, DOI Minister Chris Thomas and Naughty Trucks, or perhaps Troublesome Trucks, Daphne Kane and Charles Gard consider a possible move to allow a charitable body to run the Heritage Railways, as well as discussing the will-they-won't-they question on reinstating the horse trams. Hopefully we'll also have time to review some of the weighty topics discussed in Tinwald this week. So, will Chris Thomas get the better of the naughty trucks, or will he be disrailed? And with that, uh, over to you, gentlemen and lady. Um, Daphne Kane, you asked um, a couple of questions uh, at the end of the Tinwald question paper this week of Minister Thomas. Uh, one particular one in relation to the status of uh, the railways and uh, government's apparent desire to reawaken the, uh, I think I think it was the Quail Report's original suggestion that maybe uh, Heritage Railways should be uh, put out to, to, to a, a charitable trust to run. Um, were you satisfied? Well, first of all, what was the question specifically that you were asking? And, and, uh, I can't remember in the number of supplementary questions, but I think what we were trying to drill down into is when only five years ago the SAVE report came out and Sistra did a report on the back of that. And the conclusion was very definite that Sistra stated that combined bus and rail transport services could save a million pounds of taxpayers' money rather than duplication, and that the heritage railways operation should remain in the public sector environment as volunteer labour would be unsustainable. So it begs the question, when when they, um, on the back of that, 10 years ago, previously, ECORIS had undertaken an economic assessment of the value of heritage railways operation to our economy, our GDP, and found that it was £11 million of benefit in addition to heritage um, attractions input. I think that was put at £23 million input for the economy. So I was really wanting to find out from the Minister what is this new um, inquiry review that is being um, commissioned. The uh, bids closed, I think, on the 17th October. And at the very end of the session on Tuesday, the minister said it was to review the benefit of railways to the Isle of Man economy and tourism and where it sits in Isle of Man government. So I suppose my concerns are, aren't we just repeating work that was done only five years ago? How will you get a different conclusion without changing the terms of reference? And given the sister report equally um, and the knowledge that tra- tra- Travelling passengers has increased in over those ten years. What what is he what is he hoping that the report and the review is going to recommend? And is it a case of if you don't get the answer you want, keep going back and ask for another review? So, Minister, that that's the the charge levelled against uh, government. It's fair to say in, in your answers um, you were less familiar with this perhaps than 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 you might have been. Um, is is so economic development uh, or whatever they're now called enterprise department are, are they leading on on this exercise or? or? Oh, I think I think I, th- I thought then you'd you given me a, a punch in the eye and you said I was unfamiliar with the issues. But what you meant was I was unfamiliar with that uh, that consultancy commission. Well, that consultancy commission hasn't happened. It isn't going ahead. Minister um, for Enterprise announced that. Uh, that DOI was doing it, but that was the first I'd heard about it. So it seems that um, DOI officers back in September input into, with Manx and National Heritage officers into a into that launch of uh, procurement, that was stopped. Um, now DOI is uh, preparing terms of reference uh, for a another. Um, investigation, if that's what we choose to do, but there's no, there's no investigation that's going to happen from the one that Minister Hooper asked about. In terms of the Quail report, we also have to remember that it's settled Timwell policy that we will investigate this. So that was uh, recommendation seven back in July 2016, which was about specifically about future governance inside the public envi- public sector environment of horse trams, but that was extended to include the other. Um, important, valuable, wonderful heritage railways as well. And um, secondly, we, we, we've got to make sure that we don't make assumptions and make asses of you and me and of everybody else because the idea of volunteer 
a labor isn't something that I've mentioned in this context in fact it's a ridiculous notion that people um, you know will, will do a 40 hour a week 37 hour a week whatever for no pay when you know households families themselves are relying on it on it however there are ways that you can imagine something like a foundation might well be useful to make up the um, substantial capital gaps that we now have for keeping our heritage um, railways in the condition they are now for future generations like we had them down handed down to us from past generations but it is it is fair to say this has been investigated before uh, I suppose the question that, that uh, Mrs Kane was putting there was uh, you know how many times do you have to investigate something before you say well actually maybe there's, there's, there's nothing more in this well, conceivably the um, the, uh, the analysis was flawed last time and conceivably even more fundamentally the data was flawed so therefore we've got two previous investigations the Echoris one from 10 years ago and the Sister one from um, five or six years ago they'll form part of the terms of reference along with other data that's being put together the first thing I want to make sure um, is um, stated here because there's lots of myths being put around I called them politely assumptions a minute ago but they're becoming myths the the 150th anniversary of our wonderful steam railway is happening next year. That should be the uh, headline of Manx Radio. The 130th anniversary of the electric uh, tram system will, is happening. That will that will be the thing. The season will run roughly as normal next year. The um the highways division worked with the consultants and the contractors to put down the horse the tram tracks corridor down to the sea terminal because that will happen at some time in the future when the capital is right. So that's the that that's the real story behind all this. What we now want to do is we want to maximise um, the capital that's available to provide security for our heritage rail. And Charles Gard, I mean, th- mm. it's bearing in mind where we are at the moment, the cost of living crisis, uh, everyone worried about how they're going to manage to afford to, to get through this winter. Uh, why, is, why is this in, in any way important? You know, why, why should we even be talking about this when there's so many other weighty issues uh, on, on the uh, political agenda. Well, that's a question to the minister. What on earth are they wasting time on this for? His department is mind-numbingly huge. I don't know how he sleeps at night with the airport and the ports and the roads and all the rest of it. And now they're going over this again. He said the Chorus report. Well, this is a report I've got here, probably done in 2011, which, as Daphne says, shows that the benefit to the island economy of the Heritage Railways alone is £11 million pounds. Uh, But now we hear it's probably done on flawed data. So is this what Daphne said, that you're going to keep doing this until you get the answer you want? Uh, What is the answer? Can I just ask you about this charitable status? Because I run a charity and I'm involved in lots of others. You, Minister, said in Tinwald last week, answering Daphne's question, that um, you, you said that Culture Vannin has a status of a foundation And since we've begun to appreciate that we've been much better endowed in terms of getting legacies because of the fact that the foundation is separated from government. Now, that gave the impression that being a charitable status, money has flowed in. How many legacies have you actually had? Uh, Three. But they're substantial, and obviously, we have, as we have world status, three major ones, as we have world status for our horse trams, as we have world status for our Snaefell Electric Mountain Railway, presumably all those passionate people who are just as passionate as I am and, and the other two uh, troublesome trucks or whatever you refer to them as are mm. about the heritage railways, presumably there's lots of money out there that would love to make sure that we have our island um, well, being special uh, because it's significant yeah. in world terms. Uh, actually, I, th- I think with respect to only two you've had in 40 years... I used to run the Heritage Foundation and Phil here was chairman, you're chairman now. Uh, There's been two legacies in 40 years. So it's not as though making yourself a charity, you're going to be, uh, have money flowing in. Would you need four charitable trusts to run the four railways? Who are you going to get as directors? They're all very good questions, and I'm looking forward to working with you. We've got to we've got to start knocking we've got to stop knocking this and using this as a way to attack the Department of Infrastructure and Government Policy. All three of us. And but and, you're and knocking and the railways. I mean, no. What do you see uh, running the railways uh, uh, as a subvention or an investment? So to um, which is it? Well, 
Let, let's go real back to real basics. The, the reason I agree with you that the airport and the buses are more important immediately because they have more greater challenges than the heritage railways. That's what that's what I said on my first day in the job back in the middle of June. Once it's you start, all important. Once you start looking at the um, once you start looking at the way that buses run and getting the best bus sh- schedule and the most people using the buses, you realise how intertwined it is with the people up at Bank Circus and uh, and there's lots of ambiguity about um, various things up there. So once you start looking at the buses to get them better and people will have noticed that for the last six weeks the buses have been running on time once you start looking at it you realize you have to do something different and once you start looking at that you have to look at the heritage railways and fleet services and how we organize things in general the structures of the um of the heritage railways are run from the highways division of infrastructure it's absolutely um, for me, absolutely important that we keep the Heritage Railways and I'll do everything I can to, to ensure that despite the profound, significant financial difficulties that the island and, and Minister, faces, I mean, the, the, one of the issues that, that just keeps, seems to anyway, be uh, uh, talked about frequently in mm-hmm. Tynwald, but uh, never, never seems to be getting resolved is, is the will they, won't they um, uh, question about the horse trams. Um, are we ever going to see the horse trams... F- finally getting back to the, the, the full length of the promenade? And I answered that already because these are the sorts of myths that we need to bust. So basically I thought it was unhelpful of Mr Gard, and I've challenged him to come on, charismatic Mr Gard, to come on and talk about this because it's unhelpful helpful to say sort of blame personality issues in the department for something that happened because basically Highways Division, the contractors, the Department of Infrastructure, however you want to characterise it, have left the horse tram corridor through to the sea terminal. There is a business case for laying those tr- tracks down on the master plan for Douglas Promenade that's now on display in Douglas Borough Council entrance hall and in the um, in the sea terminal shows the um, that corridor we've got we've now got to with find no, the financing with no tracks for, on it it's we've just now got a to corridor. find the financing for it you know we're Sorry, talking you've been given the finance haven't you uh, I understand that twice Tinwald has voted the money in the original scheme and since then to put the horse trams back to the sea terminal and that money in the millions of pounds overspend on this promenade scheme has been purloined to do something else and now you're blaming the horse trams the money was already there it sells tickets to events and it's really really fun to listen to you but it wasn't purloined the environment and infrastructure committee are investigating the finances as our treasury at the moment in the next few months i'll be coming along to to tim world with a statement about closing off the existing promenade works and beginning the next promenade works and the next promenade works are the pavement the, the, the you know the uh, the real promenade mm-hmm. along it, the sea walls, which comes from the Climate Change Adaptation Fund, and important things like bus stops and the Heritage Rail, and also what Douglas Borough Council is doing with its gardens. And we should we, we, we should be we should be you know recognising where we are, which is the £27 million of uh, budget for the promenade originally because of political intervention because of political intervention at various points and changed decisions and all, and, and, and things that turned up under, under the ground um, you know, ended up being spent in different ways by in the, in the couple of years at the and end of the last Tinwell administration. did Tinwell vote for the horse trams to go back? Tin- did, they Tinwell, did Tinwell give you the money? Whether you use the word purloined or not, where has that money gone? That money's gone to complete the promenade project, uh, presumably with the permission and the concurrence of Treasury, and certainly uh, with the uh, with uh, t- um, with um, with government's permission, and probably with Timwold's permission. Probably we'll with Timwold's permission. Well, Are you sure about that? Well, the Environment and Infrastructure Committee has produced three three reports, including a final report, and I'm sure they'll look at it again. My current interest now is uh, is closing off the. Uh, the contract with the con- contractors. What I do know is that I found it frustrating that you would talk about purloining without any evidence to that fact. And also, well, you haven't got any evidence that Tinwald has voted uh, specifically to put the money into the vast hole that's opened up I, I, to fund the ju- promenade. Just, just to, um, <laughs> um, if, if, uh, I'm we need sure to do some research uh, on the Tinwald <laughs> debate. I, I think we're, I think I was right about naughty trucks here. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the, uh, the, the, the trucks that's uh, been sitting listening to, to this uh, is, is, is Daphne Cade. Uh, da- Daphne... Um, Never uh, heard you described as a truck. <laughs> <laughs> well, da- uh, I mean, the, the, it's fair to say that, that there are um, quite strin- stringent, stri- strident views on, on, on both sides on, on whether the, the tram should or shouldn't be allowed back. I mean, you, you're in a, a constituency which is heavily... 
uh, filled with with heritage and heritage railways, the Snaefell Mountain Railway and of course the the electric railway um, divide your constituency really. Um, so, So I imagine your constituents are very interested, but there are quite significant parts of the island with limited um, heritage assets. Um, do you, are all members of Tinwald as uh, bothered as uh, Charles obviously appears to be in, in relation to all this? Well, we'd have, to, we'd have to have that debate. I think the worry for me is the parts of Mackled are only reached by the electric railway. There, are, there is no other form of public transport that is accessible to a large proportion of the community in, that, in the northern part of the MER line, which is also described by seasoned traveller and driver Andrew Scarf, or himself a historian, as the, the most scenic part of the railway network. And what, what worries me is actually the Isle of Man's great selling point is the variety and range of railway transport systems within our um, ownership, and that includes the horse tramway. And in fact, the minister could perhaps check up because my understanding is the the final year that it operated along the full length of the promenade, two lock promenade, was in in the region of a hundred thousand paying travellers. So, in terms of next year being these significant anniversaries, one hundred and fifty on the steam, one hundred and thirty on the electric railway, you would anticipate that the transport festivals are going to be very very popular. That in fact operation of the railways throughout the season is a major heritage um, visitor attraction mm. to the island. And um, the, the worry I have is when, when you're saying you're looking at new ways of working, can we have the, the guarantee of support from the minister to keep operating the railway network as we have it at the moment? You know, in other places are all putting, restoring um, tram lines and increasing public transport use away from car use, for instance. And until I think we, with the climate board that uh, Mr Thomas is part of, um, undertake a comprehensive transport strategy for the island and see where everything fits into that, it seems a bit premature to address just the railways. And that's what concerns me, that we've had previous reports that support it. The um, increase in usage of the railways has included, I think it's 10,000 meals served on the dining car and up Snaefell over a season, which previously didn't happen. The Alaman government has taken on the um, tram, the horse trams as well. Um, and they are a particularly big draw for younger children. And the, the thing that, that um, I think needs to go on the record is the fact of them running isn't actually just the people who board the trains, but it's the many, many people who take photographs of them and watch them go past. You know, you can't you can't write on the on the Bee Gees statue, but how many hundreds and thousands of photos have been taken and gone round the world of that as a unique attraction on the promenade? And Minister, I mean, it, it's hard to deny that um, the, the one element of the promenade scheme, as, as I understand it, the one element that wasn't delivered uh, in completion uh, was the horse tram track. So that does give us an indication as to what your department Thanks. That's, that's not uh, quite true because okay. the first time you and I sat down in 2013-14 to talk about the whole promenade scheme, we had £40 million budget from memory and that included uh, the promenade and the pavements all the way, it included the sea walls, it included everything and then for political reasons that got paired back to to the you know, substantially less than that. So so therefore at, one, at a certain point what was really important to the politicians in about um, 2017, 2018, 2019 and then changed again in 2020-21 was different from what you and I intended back in 2014-15. So that's why I wanted to get a 10-year master plan drawn up with Douglas Borough Council for the whole of the promenade. It's no longer called a 10-year master plan. It's got it's got ambigu- it's got ambiguous dates. Originally it started off at five years because we still haven't got Treasury concurrence and Douglas Treasury hasn't got the ratepayers concurrence for the expenditure. But we're, now we've got a vision. I just want to come back to one can other I, can point. I, can I go back? What's really important? You said to politicians, but actually, what's really important to the visiting travelling public is to have proper facilities in order to get on and off the horse trams and at the minute they're in the middle of a road it isn't particularly safe we've got these significant anniversaries and anticipate hopefully increased numbers of visitors and yet there are no facilities for passengers using the horse trams on its current curtailed section so will that be put in place so that they can safely board and disembark and also when is it going to go the first section up to the cultural quarter to the war memorial so that it has some purpose in terms of where it's going and then when does he anticipate the final section will be reinstated? 
we have got three champions here, four even of the uh, of the um, of the horse trams and of heritage railways. Culture Van Inn even funded um, the horse Douglas Bay horse tramway when 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 you were chair, um, Phil, and um, got me into a lot of trouble subsequently and so on. But uh, anyhow, that's uh, that's by the way. But um, but. Uh, as, as soon as possible, it couldn't be any earlier than the winter of 2023, which is what I said on July the 30th um, when it when it went, when, when was being opened. But I just want you to join in to say we have the Department of Infrastructure has spent millions, quite rightly, quite properly, on the new tram sheds, which were a wonderful facility. The opening of which got delayed for a couple of years. One point two million. We have put down we have put down the horse tram tracks, and they have left the corridor. Look, what you've got to accept is that uh, we're we're actually all in on this together. But the issue is that money is tight, and as 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 Phil has said in the questions, you know, this has to be balanced against other priorities. You know, nearly nearly 18 million has been spent on um, health care, on knee operations, and so on. Um, but tens they're of proving millions that the subvention you things. give to the railways, even 10 years ago, when that when visit when travelling public was significantly yeah. lower than it is now, was more than double the amount of money invested in the whole of yeah. the heritage railways network. So you're saying, but ca- if we don't can't continue to invest yeah. there comes an issue of the the state of the the railway tracks and also yeah. in terms of the the network itself yeah. well let me just be, let function. me just do three practical things because i'm quite a practical pragmatic person i don't talk in nebulous things about are they valuable in themselves and for the economy practical thing number one can any of our railways ever be used for computer commuter traffic that's a simple question that we'll ask real consultants to tell us some people tell me you have to have the same number of people living at either end of the rail line and you have to have people living along the rail line for them to be used as commuter traffic the um as you know the uh, the horse tram tracks down to the um the, the memorial are set up to actually run with the electric trams or at the right weight and everything the right distance apart to actually take commuter traffic we need to establish whether that's the case second point we need to actually establish whether or not having them in a foundation will be helpful to maintain and secure their future or not helpful that's a practical question the most important thing i want to leave you with is that Morale amongst the people who work in buses and heritage rail is rock bottom. For the first time, governments commissioned a public health-led wellbeing survey, and I'm going to be presenting. The experts are going to be presenting back with me there and with the trade union there in the, in the next couple of weeks because it's rock bottom morale amongst the workforce in those areas. Um, the um, the charitable trust in the Isle of Man, the wonderful charitable trust in this space, um, are beginning to meet me. Um, having first meetings next week with some of them. Um, want to ha- we w- I want us by the end of this interview and in the next few weeks, we'll be on the same side because we all care about our heritage rail and the question is about how we secure it and, and actually suggesting that DOI is trying to get rid of it in some ways unhelpful. Well, I, I, sad, sadly, I think we, we do need at this stage to take a short break. Oh. So you're listening to Perspective and I'm joined by Chris Thomas, Minister for the Department of Infrastructure, Daphne Kane, uh, MHK for Garth, yes I almost said Glenn Faber there, I don't know why, and uh, Charles Gard, uh, campaigner I think it's fair to say. And Charles, um, you you feel, uh, oh it feels to me, I mean I've been accused this week by uh, the uh, a, a prominent political commentator as being the Tinwald Agony Ant. Um, but I, I do feel that you you maybe aren't as sympathetic to the minister's plight. I mean, it, it is fair to say, certainly from my experience, that DOI is woefully short of resource to do all the things that everyone wants it to do. Yes, of course, and I'm not in the Treasury, I'm not running the economy, but the idea that we can start getting rid of Uh, heritage items because there's a waiting list at the hospital. I think I said this on the radio a while back. I waited two and a half years for an appointment to see a consultant. Two and a half years. Uh, And it was a 20-minute appointment. And as I mentioned, if we hadn't painted the Laxey wheel, would that money have gone to bringing my appointment forward? Uh, And if that's how it works, then obviously people are going to say, well, let's get rid of the railways because we can do without them. Let's not fund the villa and the gaiety or culture van in all the sports uh, council because um, we can use the money elsewhere and the waiting list will still be there. That's no way to run a country. It has to be, unfortunately, the government's job to allocate and keep all these things going for us. But what I really want the minister to to say, does he accept... uh, I mean, he said this report from 2011 has got flawed data, which is very convenient, but does he accept that the heritage railways are not just 
um, to be subsidised for a few people to use. They actually filter millions of pounds into the economy because we've had over 300 coaches, 340 coaches here this year. I've tried to get on the railways sometimes. I go on them every weekend. There are queues of people. All those people are spending money in the hotels. They come to Milntown, which I operate. They come there, they spend the money. We can keep staff on. We can order goods. They're spending money in the hotels. I met with all the Blue Badge Guides last week. They're all uh, devastated if this is ever going to be cut down in any way. They are all showing these people around. They've got very wealthy tourists that they're giving private tours to. There's an enormous economic benefit from this. And you're sending out some sort of a signal that you're going to look into it. And, and maybe, all right, you've totally scotch the idea of volunteers but the the foundation idea is just confusing it all and if you think the staff are demoralized it's because they're not sure what's going to happen so can you just tell us that you do recognize the economic spread out of the money from the heritage railways uh, i'm I'll accept that challenge, I do, but this is much more important than just economic value. There's intrinsic value, there's so many other values. It's part of the Isle of Man. That's what I said on July the 30th when I had the privilege to reopen the horse trams, and I genuinely believe that, and I'll do everything I can to secure it, this for future generations like we had it left for us. But, and sec oh, so a second point is I didn't necessarily say that the data in Ecaris was uh, was flawed, but it needs to be investigated to make sure we have the right data these days. But the most important point is the Department of Infrastructure budget has been has been slashed in real terms over the last decade, as uh, as as Phil is telling us, and um, that's just uh, that's just objectively true. It says that in the footpaths report, and even Treasury agreed that that was the case when uh, when, when I presented to Tim Wood for the whole of the footpath network of the Isle of Man. We have to maintain them on th just over three hundred thousand um, pounds a year, working really really well with Visit Isle of Man. Want to work really really well with Charles Gar, Daphne Kane, and the wonderful heritage enthusiasts and experts around the. Island to make sure that we have that future and I hope we can get together behind that as a task because money is tight, public funds are tight um, and we've got to make sure that every pound is spent in the best possible ways and there are some practical questions that we need to answer. I want to leave this programme with the people at Bank Circus and everywhere else in the Heritage Rail, Bus, Fleet Services, in fact the whole of DOI, a bit more confident about their futures because we're not, we're not questioning um, you know, their, their futures. What we're saying is we need to make sure that we can secure their futures because we've got the best possible way of arranging for future generations. And, and just knocking on the head as well two other um, rumours that are circulating, which one of which is being spread, perhaps. Well, well, no, I, I'm not. I'm not spreading <laughs> any rumours. I'm just tell, uh, asking you to 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 scupper said rumours. Uh, one rumour is that the Castletown to Port Air and part of the steam railway is to be cut. Another is that the Laxey to Ramsey part of the electric railways to cut. Presumably the department has no plans to do that? Well, I'm sure every government has plans which it's drawn up with Treasury, which is in the absolute worst case financial meltdown. What would you be able to cut first, which wouldn't, um, which wouldn't affect the statutory obligations that you have in the department? And to me, those sorts of things would be the ones that would be quite high up that list, because just by not running a railway for a few years doesn't actually damage it for the long term, but it does save money in the short term. So I'm not going to deny that that's probably the case in terms of how you could save money in, in real financial meltdown. But the, 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 the heritage rail network is hugely important for our island in all sorts of ways. I didn't like the fact that we were just doing an economic impact assessment from the Department for Enterprise about this. Worked really well with Visit Isle of Man. I had a recent meeting where they said it was wonderful to work with us. And I, I, even, I, I think it perhaps is even in, in the answer to Daphne's question, I said it was great because there are loads of money in Department for Enterprise. And it would be, would, would be great if we could start using their money to help us do really valuable things rather than just produce reports and the like and um, and um, here you know here we go let's let, let's leave this program and, and the public the, has a better understanding that I appreciate the value of what we have and how, but, but also everybody else here you know you have ganged up three people against me I'm beginning to feel and but I'm darting three? Yan, I'm darting <laughs> and I'm D'Artagnan and you're the three musketeers we're all on the basically the same side and we're all swashbuckling to an extent and basically the future of the heritage rail is so important that we need to work together rather than scoring cheap points about the past and what might have been the situation in various moments so, so, so um 
so, so what was the answer to that then about the Laxey to Ramsey and uh, Castletown to Port Erin? Oh, you, you, know, you, you, you know, Charles, that f- 40, 50, 60 years ago that was on the table. Yeah, the, in the dark days of the Isle of Man's public finances, all I said was mm. if, they, if, the, if the Isle of Man's public finances get really dark in coming years, that's the sort of thing that the right. easy decision to make. You know, Douglas up to the top of Laxey Mountain Railway, including the horse trams, is much more... You know, much more uh, at the heart of what's historical and so on than the uh, either end. Well, as, as you know, the uh, steam railway didn't go; be, wasn't planned to go beyond Castletown originally. You're and not so being on. very reassuring, is all I'll say for the minute. Yeah. But also, when you're saying you wanted to cha- when you want to save money, you're ignoring the sister report that said the combined operation of bus and rail could save a million pounds and now you're looking at a foundation and pushing out the railways but the railway infrastructure is is melted together and it's run from bank circus except the i think it's the bridge inspection every seven years that doi does so it's very much a combined operation and if you split that apart aren't you going to end up duplicating and and then potentially increasing the costs of operation so I I guess I'm asking again why are you rethinking why are you redoing the reviews that were done both in 2011 and then five years ago for the save report that said the railways are operating efficiently as they are now combined the the ministers cut me to the quick by suggesting that I'm being anything other than impartial here so I will come back a little bit on you there uh, Daphne Huge, huge, huge amounts of money has been invested in the, uh, particularly uh, recently, the uh, Laxey to Ramsey part of the electric railway. Uh, you know, m- many millions of pounds of, of taxpayers' money is going into there. Th- there will be a lot of people on the Isle of Man. Will, I mean, sad, sadly, from my perspective, because I'm a big supporter of the Heritage Railways, and I'll, I'll, I'll put that out there. Um, but uh, there are a lot of people who just do not see the value of this. They see the incredibly difficult circumstances in which they're living, and uh, they they wonder how uh, we're uh, well. Perhaps they, they they think that we're a little bit deluded uh, that, that we're we're having these conversations. If you put millions of pounds of investment in and you get more millions back then it's a no-brainer, isn't it? I mean, that's what this last report has said. It's not just the passenger figures and the takings from it. It's it's the economic thing to the island. And, you know, Visit Isle of Man wants, was it 500,000 people here by the end of the decade? If we don't have these unique selling points, never mind kayaking, but we've got the greatest water wheel in the world, the oldest continuous parliament, the most extraordinary heritage railways. If we start talking about, well, we're reviewing them, we may, you know, we may have to close bits here and there. It's just going to devastate the whole thing. I think that's a good point. And also in terms of how the um, increase of visitors to the railways and to the island has, has panned out over the last few years, it's because of active marketing between Manx National Heritage and the Heritage Railways to go out and secure those groups. And they're very high paying visitors spending several days here because we have the network of rail that interests them. And it comes back, one of the slogans when I worked at Tourism 20 years ago was it's our differences that make the difference. So if, if you start not piecemeal attacking the heritage attractions that you have and the, and the, the railways is at the heart of that also perhaps perhaps taking away any possibility of it being used for a, um, a transport public transport network in the future what would the Isle of Man be left with that would be the unique selling point to bring visitors could, over? Could the Minister just, uh, as he sits in the Council of Ministers, tell us the truth about our finances? I was thinking about 1982 when the Savings and Investment Bank crashed. The government had £1 million in reserve. Mm. The railways were all running marvellously. Um, the Isle of Man is an enormous success story. Your Treasury Minister's pointed out recently we've got 1.6 billion in reserves. Mm. How come that... Uh, I know the world is suffering uh, and we have to budget for a profit here uh, for a surplus but um, I mean what is the true situation is it really gloomy in the council ministers meetings when everyone's saying oh we can't afford to do this they're all still spending like uh, like like glee you know that's part of my issue I'm much more uh, fiscally conservative than some of them are but no the reality is if it is 1.6 billion I'm not sure whether that's uh, well that's what figure that's that's 400 million pounds less in nominal terms than it was 12 years ago and that's pretty bad and we've got a structural financial deficit according to the most recent report which is still hundreds more than 100 million of, of structural financial deficit so we are we have got precarious. So position. any investment that's going to bring money into the island it's would be welcome. And let's work like on it. The let, let's work on it together. Yeah. My my predecessor as Douglas West uh, MHK always said to me, Chris, 
you, you know, you won't do this because you care passionately about culture and arts and heritage in any case. But just remember, the 30 or 40 million we spend on all this sort of stuff is not the sort of place you should go. Um, go for the go for the um, 970 million on other matters of policy like health and social security. And that's always been how I've done my, my thing. But you can trust me, Charles and Daphne and Phil, that basically we need to do everything we can to make sure that the heritage rail future is secured. You know, we're maybe still talking about taking it up, but it might not run as much as it we does now. We have that recorded. Thank you, Minister. So I, th- uh, th- <laughs> just, just, I mean, I, I, I have a lot of sympathy with the Minister. I, I so recognise I, I recognize the sort of answers that I'm hearing, uh, uh, <laughs> having trotted out similar ones myself <laughs> on the one hand and yet on the other. Uh, and it's difficult. It is very difficult being uh, in, in particular in, in DOI. Uh, Which is the job uh, I wanted. I went yeah. there because it is the hardest job in government. I was offered Department for Fair Enterprise. I was offered other jobs before because I, I absolutely insisted I wasn't giving up housing and I wanted infrastructure mm. because we have to sort out our buses. We have to sort out our airport. We have to sort out our harbours. We, we have to maintain our heritage. We should be doing so much more with what we've got on the island and I want to... to, to um, to re- rehabilitate the reputation of Department of Infrastructure. I've given myself that personal challenge because uh, sniping isn't helpful for people who work there and it's not actually secure in the future. I wanted to do that twice when I was uh, DOI Minister. Um, <laughs> Can the- I just bring in, because you're saying about the state of finances, but in fact we've just approved an economic strategy in Timwell this week that's got a, a potentially a £100 million fund to invest in future initiatives for the island. And some of those very exciting prospects include, I think they called it the knowledge economy mm-hmm. The one I'm particularly keen on seeing, which would be potentially a faculty of a university um, built here, attracting world-class university. Perhaps we could get back to the type of Port Erin Marine Biological Station studying that, that went on in marine sciences or even IT. So there was an enormous amount of projects. And I did feel when I read the economic strategy, the one thing that was missing was heritage. It yes, uh, and, and it was a, a very significant omission. I, I thought heritage, culture and from my perspective, language. Um, the the other uh, the the important thing I think that you've you've said there was uh, the hundred million or so structural deficit. Um, you sort of um, dropped this in, in in a fairly casual sort of way, but fundamentally, this has been the the problem that the Isle of Man has had since the nineteen sixties when it introduced a low tax economy. We have high spending ambition. Uh, but we don't actually collect sufficient taxes to deliver that. Now, we kind of managed that through the 60s and 70s, maybe early 80s, with some of what was described as Wild West money. Um, We then managed another decade or so with an overly generous share of VAT um, from the UK. Um, The economic strategy, though, doesn't fundamentally appear, to me anyway, to address that imbalance between tax and spend. I think it does. It's one of the um, the top four outcomes is about public finances. And again, infrastructure will be hugely involved in that because if we don't have the right airport and the right air, air, air services and the right um, harbour and the right sea services, it, it won't be as good a place to live the same way with for culture. And, and looking out there into the into our part of the Irish Sea, into our huge territorial seas, we've got wonderful opportunities there where we might in the future have a resource um, public income levy um, that's, uh, that's described in the economic strategy, you know, offshore wind, conceivably there could be a gas there that's commercially exploitable and that's all inside the um, Department of Infrastructure's p- uh, portfolio as well. So I don't get, I'm, 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 I'm rising to the debate here, I'm, I'm using rhetoric to describe our public finances. If I was Treasury Minister I wouldn't be saying some of the same things in the same way that I, 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 I'm saying now. I'm just, um, I'm just uh, you know, talking to Daphne and, uh, and Charles in the way that they're talking back to me when they use words like purloined to mean reduced and so on. But you know, essentially our finances are not as good as they were um, 20 years ago. Um, 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 there, and they need to be better, and that's something that I really passionately care about. And uh, 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 and and we need to absolutely secure our cultural heritage, our, our, our um, heritage railways, all aspects of our heritage. And there's a clue in the name. We have a Manx Museum that's set up as a trust. We have Culture Van Inn that's set up as a foundation. And I do think there might be something that can be learned from that status at this difficult time. So, uh, Charles, you've you've obviously struck right through the minister's heart with purloined there. Which, uh, um, well, I, I wait for the facts from him as to where that money did go, which Tinwell voted for. And 
and said facts are coming, the Minister yeah, has good, said, so, so that's encouraging. Uh, Daphne Cade, I mean, one of the other things on the Timbald Order paper, maybe not a weighty issue, but important for many people, was the report into footpaths. And um, those of us, possibly I would include Charles in this, who, who've been around uh, co commentating on, on politics for, for, for some years, uh, could perhaps look at this rather cynically. The, effectively, the, the committee was set up to resolve what to do with footpaths, and its recommendation is that DOI sets up a working group to, to sort out footpaths. Um, is, is, is that fair, or, or do you think there was a bit more came out of that? I think that's a bit unfair. We've recognised that in the evidence that came to us, DOI does have a budget of £360,000 to maintain the footpaths, and they said they needed at least double to be able to do a, a reasonable job maintaining our footpaths, which again are a huge attraction for visitors and local residents to enjoy, um, and I think increasingly so since lockdown. But the I think at one of our public sessions, um, the highways representatives who sat before us said that in order to bring the the um, all the footpaths up to the the current reasonable standard, it was nine hundred and forty something thousand pounds that they would need first and then they would need to double the current allocation to do the footpaths. And we come back to the same thing, that the, the, the law, um, the statutory requirements on maintaining the definitive map of the island all sit within the DOI, and yet that hasn't been done because they haven't had the resources. There is now great momentum behind um, making the definitive map accurate in terms of recording the current footpaths and also they, they've got some ambitions of extending the network but it boils down to me it's it's something gets budgeted gets approved gets built potentially and then there's no budget to maintain it even the heritage trail running between Douglas and Peel the um, people who maintain it weren't involved at the time that was planned. The machinery they need to maintain it wasn't considered when they, they made it the size it was. There was the, nobody joins up the, 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 the links. And then when it comes to maintenance of highways as well as footpaths in towns and out of town, the green and the grey, we recognise that DEFA... Department of Environment, Food and Agriculture were were perceived and doing a really excellent job putting in bids for million pounds to do up the glens that needed significant investment and they also had a, 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 a hierarchy of priority that they they had a triangle of what was the absolute priority in terms of the amount of people using that facility and I think that we knew and we recognised as a committee we weren't able to change what was in primary legislation how the departments operated but I think we've we've recommended that the Councillor Minister's Cabinet Office put together a team where they have the input from those people to determine how we get better maintenance of our footpaths in a in a cohesive way across all the footpaths on the island, including we, we heard from some local authorities who had offered to do some work, but then it was either duplicated by DOI with no real structure of knowledge of which work to do, or actually refused with commissioners offering to fund maintenance of footpaths and and DOI weren't weren't aware or said no so so I think there's been a bit of um the department wanting to retain control but not actually having the as the adequate budget to do that and the end result is that some of our footpaths are not in a very good state of repair even though we as a, um, a nation are marketing the island with the footpaths as one of our selling points so it needs to be done and Minister, um, we had last week the self-styled Colossus of Rhodes, Stu Peters, uh, on the programme. Um, he was, it's fair to say, um, he, he had limited interest in... Um, in footpaths, in, but in that footpaths. will be part of his remit. But it will, it will. Um, there's an awful lot of, of uh, complaints and concerns about the state of our highways. Um, it, it, it's an in, incredibly difficult task, isn't it? Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll start with footpaths. So the, um, the officers or the officer from DFE, the officers from DEFA and the officers from DOA are working really, really closely together and every Tim World pretty much I've got a footpath order in and we, we've got a plan and we're working through to do the definitive maps. Well, as soon as we're ready, we'll pass that over to DFE to put it online digitally and start using it for their promotion to uh, tourists, help blue badge guides and, and, and so on. That's uh, in terms of footpaths. You know, I, I, I can throw it. 
I, I, yeah, I'm going to do this because of this sort, it's this sort of program. But you know, DEFA started a signage project in 2018. What happened to that? You know, basically, it always comes down to uh, always comes down to to money and joining things up. And what I want is I want to encourage the officers to work together, and I hope DEFA will join with DOI in doing that. And it's not going to be DEFA versus DOI. It's actually we need to get the most out of our footpaths because they're a, a treasure for us, who people who live here, and Ho- also for Liffey. Hopefully, both departments will be participating in the council of ministers' working party well, so that Timwald has approved to be set up to draw all the parties no, 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 together. I to said that together, find and DOI are going to be very, very pleased to coordinate that because you've got to remember, you know, the glens are great, but they're a small part of the massive network of uh, the, the highways. Uh, the highways uh, coordinates. So you know, we we do much more for structures than you said. Just look at them every seven years. We do much more for footpaths than just the three hundred thousand. So, so for instance, you know, I, I, I people have said in Peel even. I'm going to Peel on Tuesday. This is a, a pitch for people have said in Peel. It's wonderful what we're doing along the, um, the the footpath along the main road from St John's to Peel. People seem to be very very pleased with the um, the end of the heritage rail and maintaining it. As thing, one of the issues is as you hinted at is equipment. You know, we've I've been out. I've got my last meeting in Ramsey. Then I've been out everywhere to meeting every. Uh, of commissioners about what we do in rural footpaths, highway footpaths, gullies, all those practical things. And essentially, m- many of the commissioners around the island haven't got the right equipment to cut hedges properly because, you know, DOI used to do it and we have we, we, we could cut it up to five metres at the right time of year. Most palmers can only do it up to two or three metres and that's different. It affects the, f- the future. We've got to optimise this and that's a very important um, part for us. In terms of Stu Peters, in, he, he's, he's not got any delegated authorities. He's the champion of the motor He's a self-confessed champion of the motorist, and it's important that we listen to that perspective. It might be that he has some delegations in the future, but as this is his first job, he, he's learning on it, and he's a champion of the motorist. And I actually enjoy discussion and dialogue and talking and listening, and it's great to have him in the department. And he's completely right. Maintenance, maintenance, maintenance has to be the priority for the department in these, um, in these strained times and, and, and innovation as well. And also in saying all this, I think we also are guilty because we know the good times potentially 15, 20 years ago, the Isle of Man was better funded and able to do all this. Mm -hmm. The perception is now, you know, the nostalgia is always better previously. But in fact, the Isle of Man is a fantastic location and we have huge amounts of selling points. And in fact, some of this political negativity, we want things to be better in terms of health and education, Mm -hmm. facilities for schools and special needs and everything else. But we shouldn't lose sight that the Isle of Man does actually have a great product, both to attract visitors and people to live here. We've got some wonderful commissioners. So I've got a document here, which is the delegation from Minister Gorn at the time to Ray Harmer, who was chair of Peel Commissioners back in 2015, to deal with all these sorts of issues, and that's on the table, as is the delegation with every other local authority. And I want to make sure that we get the most of our countryside, the roads, and p- pavements, are the, in the best way possible, because we're revisiting that. You know, for instance, if we have the equipment in DOI, why shouldn't it somehow be made available elsewhere? And if we can run a 24-hour um, uh, customer service, why shouldn't we be making that available for other people? Ultimately, there are people around the island who are going to have to pay more rates so that there's more fair funding of all of this, but that's that's just the price to are be paid. Are you talking an all-island rate there, Minister? Well, for instance, with swimming pools, you know, we might be, well be that we're going down an all-island rate to deal with the crisis that exists down in the, in, in the south. That's definitely on the table because, you know, it's not right. Is this a lump sum rate? Is, is, like you know, a toilet tax previously? No, no, no. I mean, it's, it, rate is always a pence in the pound. That previously, there was a sort of there was a toilet tax, as it was called, which was a lump sum. But no, I um, mean, you know, it's not right that Braddon and Onken ratepayers don't pay for any swimming pools. Douglas sort of gets away with it because they gave all the land for the NSC. But that can't be right. And we have got a you know, precarious situation down in the south with swimming pools. And the All Island Leisure Rate is something that's on the table. And but I'd would like it only to... fund swimming pools, or you could say leisure rate should uh, attach to Morick Park or Onken Park? or the parks and... and Step step, step by step. But what we all want is what's best for the future of our island, for the people who live here, but also for that wonderful heritage and environment that we have the privilege to be part of and share. But isn't the whole rating system flawed? Yes. And you were in charge, previous administration, of having the aeroplane that went past and did all the spatial (laughs) photography of all the properties that we were promised this new, fairer rating system that yeah. would be a modern system to yeah. apply to if, the island. If only we'd got to if that sooner. Uh, <laughs> sadly, uh, we're, we're coming to the end of the programme. I think uh, we've probably got long enough for maybe ten word answers. Uh, are, are you, Charles, content with what you've heard? Well, if it all comes true, yes. I uh, recognise the Minister has given lots of very positive assurances 
and um, uh, well, if he's in the post in a year or two's time, then we'll see what the results are. Thank you, uh, Minister. You, um... I, I always enjoy the uh, talking with cultural aficionados, heritage lovers, and these are very important parts of our island. And the future's safe as long as we work together and, 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 and don't score points, but actually settle issues and challenges we've got. Daphne, content. I'm content that the Minister's um, enthusiasm for Heritage Railways is evidence. I think my issue is don't break it, don't break what's not, don't fix it when it's not broken, and also don't repeat review after review when actually the fundamental uh, issue here is lack of funding. So let's fix the funding and the morale and operation will hopefully improve. So that was DOI Minister Chris Thomas, uh, Daphne Kane, MHK for Garth. And Charles Gard, campaigner and <laughs> naughty truck. And I'm Phil Gorn. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Phil. Thank you very much.